Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our Eucharist, to our communion service. Um, I've had lots of people, well, one or two people, um, have a word with me about the wearing of face masks. And what I think I'd like to try is, if you are happy to wear your face mask, as, as is, then please uh, stay towards the back of the church and um, we'll have one metre rather than two metre distancing, which of course we can do now. So perhaps we can get more people in a pew. If you would rather not wear your face mask, then please do come and sit near the front. Uh, and hopefully when we stop face masks full, you're all going to sit near the front anyway. Um, we'll do take communion as we have been doing. So just before you come up, I will say the body of Christ, and you will of course respond Amen, and then there will be no words said as you take communion. If you're not wearing your mask, then, then that's fine. Uh, those giving the bread, will, we will continue to wear our masks. So, so I will wear my mask as Debbie will today uh, when we give the bread. <coughs> And then uh, Colin will guide you as we have been doing uh, recently. Next week, of course, is our family service. It's harvest. Um, if you are going to, planning to bring a gift, um, it would be good this year so that we can get food to the food bank if you could bring non-perishables. Um, if you want to give a donation towards the flowers, that would be lovely. If you give it to Jane or to me, um, that would be great. And we're going to decorate the, the, at least the front of the church. Um, those flowers and maybe the odd box of chocolate if it arrives, um, will go out to people. If you know of anyone who would like a gift of those flowers, would you? there is a list at the back if you just sign with their name and their address, it will of course be kept private so that we can get those delivered. Uh, yes, sir. Sorry, can I just say that non perishables for the food bank can include toiletries, washing liquids, um, any feminine products, any toilet rolls, anything like that. It doesn't have to be food, please. Thank you. So, uh, on Saturday is our Harvey Supper race night. Uh, at half past seven, it will be in the village hall. It will be a shared supper, so please bring food to share. That's Saturday night. The race night is back, half past seven in the village hall. On Advent Sunday, which is the last Sunday in November, if you remember last year, we were planning uh, a special e mission evening with Paul and Fiona Jones. Paul Jones, who was in Manford Man, and his wife Fiona, who is an actress. Um, we are hoping that they will be here this year. So it's a chance to hear someone's faith story. So if you have friends, relatives who might be interested or who you would like to hear more about the faith, Please, that's the night to bring them along. It should be a really good evening. So that's Saturday Sunday, hopefully at six o'clock, but there'll be more firm details in the next few weeks. So please do think about coming. Um, I suspect there won't be much man from man music, um, but there'll be a lot of his new, new Christian stuff, which should be very good for us to hear. Uh, on the 4th of December, Again, last year we were going to have a, Chris, a carol concert with Cantamichi uh, Crier. They are coming this year on the 4th of December. What time, Colin? 7.30. 7.30. And tickets for that will be £8. Uh, Colin has got tickets already, so if you want to come to that, um, please do have a word with Colin and get your tickets. I said last week that we're hoping to start the notice sheet again. Uh, please, if you have anyone 
who you would like prayed for, be they sick or, or troubles of other kind, um, please let me know within the next week or so, and then we'll get that uh, started again. Thank you. That's all our notices for this week. So let us bring our thoughts and our prayers to our loving God. Let us pray. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then sit and bow our heads in confession, confessing our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all people. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through nakedness, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died our cause, forgive us all that is past. Mighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we stand as we praise our God. Glory, glory to God, God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God. To him be glory forever. To him be glory forever. Alleluia, amen. Alleluia, amen. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. Glory, glory to God, God, glory to God, Son of the Father. To him be glory forever. To him be glory forever. Alleluia, amen. Alleluia, amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. 
To him be glory forever. To him be glory forever. Alleluia, amen. Alleluia, amen. Alleluia, amen. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to that which is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May we sit for our first week. The first reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 2, reading verses 18 to 24. <clears throat> the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother, and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm set for this morning is Psalm 8, and our response is, How glorious is your name in all the world. How glorious is your name in all the world. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised, out of the mouths of babes and to the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. How glorious is your name in all the world. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained. What are mortals that you should be mindful of them? May human beings that you should seek them out. How glorious is your name in all the world. You have made them little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under their feet. How glorious is your name in all the world. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. And so we sit for our second week.
prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven, so he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. It is not to angels that he has subjected the world to come, about which we are speaking, but there is a place where someone has testified, what is mankind, that you are mindful of them, a son of man, that you care for him. You made them a little lower than the angels. You crowned them with glory and honour, and put everything under their feet. In putting everything under them, God left nothing that is not subject to them. Yet at present, we do not see everything subject to them. But we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honour, because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. He said, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters. In the assembly I will sing your praises. It is not to angels that he has subjected the world to come, about which we are speaking. But there is a place where someone has testified. What is mankind that you are mindful of them? A son of man that you care for him? You made them a little lower than the angels. You crowned them with glory and honour, and put everything under their feet. In putting everything under them, God left nothing that is subject to them. Yet at present, we do not see everything subject to them. But we do see Jesus who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honour, because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters in the assembly I will sing your praises. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And if she divorces her husband and marries another man, 
she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to Jesus to place his hands on them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, I wonder how many of you remember this one. I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. And it goes later and it says about furnishing it with love. 1972. That was written a time when most of us, I think, the world then was a bit uncertain. We'd had three day weeks. Government was, it was all pretty unstable, strikes. The lyrics expressed the writer's longing to help make a more peaceful, harmonious world in which all creation People, plants, animals are not working against each other, but with each other. It was a popular song at the time because it spoke to many people, perhaps including us, of a better world and still do. And I guess it's something that most of us would still long and pray for, that peaceful, just harmonious world where we all get on, where everyone is treated with respect, where there is love rather than hate, where there is trust rather than distrust, a world where there's no more queuing up at the petrol station, where there's no more COVID injustice, where women do not get murdered on a regular basis where there's no more breaking down in relationships. A world where we all get on with our neighbours. A world where we nations cooperate with nations. A world indeed furnished with God's love. In other words, a world like we see in our Genesis reading, where God creates the beginning of community. God's intention is not for us to live alone, but in perfect harmony with others and with the whole of creation. Equals working with God to care for, for what he has made. However, as we read through the Bible and as we know ourselves throughout history, people don't always live in perfect harmony and don't furnish the world with love. Relationships break down on all sorts of levels and for all sorts of reasons. International relationships can be strained and sadly for some, their most close relationships can break down too. If we think back to our Gospel reading, Jesus is being challenged on the matter of divorce on whether or not it should be permitted. The Pharisees, the religious law keepers of the day, are out to trap him again into saying something that could be seen as heretical. They're clever because they choose to ask this particular question when Jesus is near the River Jordan. That's the place, if you remember, where John the Baptist worked. John the Baptist who ended up being beheaded 
because he dared to criticize Herod Antipas for marrying his sister-in-law, Herodias, who was divorced from Herod's brother Philip in order to marry Herod. The question of divorce is still a painful and sensitive one, especially perhaps for Christians. People marry hoping that it will be for the rest of their life. But we know things can go wrong and the idea is not able to be fulfilled. And when Jesus answers the Pharisees publicly, he refers them to the law of Moses, who set up a legal system to help protect women who were left vulnerable with no rights. They could be just told to go. No money, no nothing. A system that Jesus says had to be set up because of people's hardness of heart. Even in Jesus' day, a man could easily divorce his wife, leaving her destitute and shunned by her community. Perhaps this is part of the reason why Jesus says privately to his disciples that the marriage is a bond that should never be broken. It is not what God intended. God's intention was and still is that two people join together in marriage to form a new partnership and no one should break that bond. It seems a really uncompromising statement. Very hard for Christians who perhaps sadly in some cases find themselves in loveless, abusive or relationships and for whom marriage is not at all about living in perfect harmony. Perhaps what I found it more helpful to do is look at other situations in the gospel where Jesus is dealing with people's relationships. I looked back at John chapter 8. The scribes and the Pharisees bring a woman caught in adultery to Jesus. According to Jewish law, she should be stoned. The religious leaders are waiting to catch Jesus out again. But what does Jesus do? He takes his time, writes on the ground, and deals with the woman with compassion and without judgment. He also confronts those who have already judged her and brought her here with their own sin. But at the same time, he tells her not to sin again. Seems to be an indication of how we should approach those in broken relationships. <coughs> I also went to John chapter 4. Jesus meets a woman at the well. She's there at a time when there's not many people about. Why? Because she's a Samaritan. They weren't very popular among the Jews. She also has had many relationships. But Jesus asks her for a drink. He doesn't condemn her. He asks her for a drink and takes time to talk to her. She has faced much judgment. She's been married five times and is now with another man who isn't her husband. I think even in these more modern times, people would probably still raise their eyebrows at her in judgment. Jesus again didn't ignore what she'd done but offered her a new way of life, the living water. Jesus in these examples doesn't judge or condemn, but shows compassion and mercy. And perhaps that should be our attitude when relationships break down. If we get back to that gospel reading to the next bit, there are whole families 
families there listening with children. The disciples see them as a nuisance, and the disciples try and turn them away. Jesus gets cross and tells the children to come to him. Children who certainly in those days had absolutely no say in anything, who didn't really count until they could either work or be married. They married, they mattered to Jesus. They were and are as much as they part of our community as anyone else. And it is often when we look at our community and when things go wrong that it is children as well as family and friends who feel the ripples when we're not living in perfect harmony. Now, I can see there are some uncomfortable issues in this passage. And the other examples in the Gospels show us how God intended and still intends the world to be. A world where there is no judgment or condemnation, but where compassion and kindness is the key. And where in God's time, we can teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we need your healing touch to make us whole people. Anoint us with your Holy Spirit that we may find true health, mind, body and spirit. Make us channels of your love to one another and to all those searching for new life and hope, meaning and peace. In the name of Jesus the healer, and trusting him we pray. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 
Bring hope, O Lord, to thy suffering people in their anguish and pain. Be thou their hope. Bring hope, O Lord, to thy persecuted people in their despair. Be thou their hope. Bring hope, O Lord, to thy needy people in their hunger and thirst. Be thou their hope. Bring hope, O Lord, to thy dying people in their hour of their death. Be thou their hope. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Eternal God, in whose perfect run no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, and no strength known but the strength of love, so guide and inspire the work of those who seek your kingdom, that all your people may find their security in that love which casts out fear and in the fellowship revealed to us in Jesus Christ our Saviour. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kindle, we pray, in the hearts of all, the true love of peace and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth that in tranquillity your kingdom may go forward till the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, we bring before you all those who are ill in body, mind or spirit, we bring before you those that we know who have deceased, and in particular, we bring before you Ray Gula, who passed away recently. Give us the strength and courage to know that death is not the end, but the beginning. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Now, in a moment of quiet prayer, let's bring before the Lord those things which are uppermost in our minds. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you stand with me, please? Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us into one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. May God give you his blessing in his name. And so we sing, Happy are they, they that love God. In 285, in 285.
Lord is here.
arms of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you. Eat in remembrance that he died for you, and feed them in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to pick up this is your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in the Almighty God and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the presence of your table, but as you are the same Lord, whose nature is always around us. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to be the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink of his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made. 
together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and the blood of the Lord, your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to the living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Just start with me. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve our Lord. And in the name of